Hamstring strain injuries result in a sudden onset of pain in the back of the thigh, often causing an abrupt end to activity. As you can see, this is exactly what happened to Usain Bolt in 2017 during his final race. When you strain or pull your hamstring, it usually involves the long head of the biceps femoris, although it can also occur to one of the other two hamstring muscles, the semitendinosus or semimembranosus. Since these muscles originate on your sit bone and insert onto your lower leg, they have actions at both the hip and the knee. Along with your glute max and adductor magnus, they contribute to hip extension and are the primary muscles responsible for knee flexion. A strain commonly occurs during movements involving forceful and extensive hamstring lengthening, such as during high-speed running or kicking. For example, if you watch Usain Bolt again, as he swings his left leg forward, his hip is moving into flexion and his knee into extension, a position which lengthens the hamstring. It is at this moment when his hamstring is rapidly lengthening in which his injury occurs. Following an injury, the goal of rehab is to address specific deficits in strength and muscle structure, as well as ultimately prepare you for the demands of high-speed running. Your timeline from injury to return to sport can take anywhere from one to six weeks or longer. This is widely variable person to person, as it will depend on factors such as the severity of your injury and your sport or position. Immediately following an injury, you will likely rest from training for a few days as this allows time for acute symptoms to reduce before starting rehab. When you should begin hamstring specific exercises is not exactly known, but most research shows that starting early within about a week is safe and even has similar return to sport times and re-injury rates compared to a delayed introduction. There's also research showing that return to play timelines are similar whether you completely avoid pain or perform and progress exercises within a certain threshold, a pain rating of four or less out of 10. Utilizing this pain threshold can even result in greater recovery of strength and better maintenance of hamstring structure. This means you can start exercises early and perform them either with or without pain. Either way, both have been shown to lead to similar results. The main exercises will consist of hamstring specific strength and a progressive running protocol, which you will perform simultaneously. Based on the function of the hamstrings, mechanism of injury, and the associated deficits seen with the hamstring strain, strength exercises will primarily emphasize two things, eccentric knee flexor strength and hip extensor strength at moderate to long muscle lengths both of which will include double and single leg variations at a high intensity. Each category will have multiple levels of difficulty, which you will progress based on performance and pain tolerance. For example, if an exercise has three levels of difficulty, you will first start with level one. Once you can complete a certain number of sets and reps through the full range of motion with a tolerable level of pain, you can progress to level two. And then to progress from level two to level three, you must meet similar criteria. The exercises will include progression criteria based on a pain threshold of four or less out of 10. But again, you can also perform these with less or no pain and likely achieve similar outcomes. Eccentric knee flexor strength, option one. Level one, eccentric sliders. With your feet on sliders, bridge up and then slowly straighten your knees. Lower your hips down, bring your feet back to the start, and repeat. Once you meet the criteria shown, progress to level two, single leg eccentric slider. Perform the same slow and controlled movement, but this time on one leg. And finally, level three, similar to the previous exercise, but now place a weight on your hip. Perform for three sets of four to six reps on each side. Eccentric knee flexor strength, option two. You will start with the same exercise as the previous option, but this time, once you meet the given criteria, you will progress to the Nordic hamstring exercise. Set up in a tall kneeling position with your knees on a pad and your feet secured. With your hips straight, slowly lower down using your hamstrings, trying to resist falling forward. 
walk yourself back up to the start and repeat. And for level three, perform the same movement, but this time hold a plate or weight at your chest. To reduce the landing impact, place a pillow or pad underneath you. Perform for three sets of four to six reps. Hip extension strength option one. Level one, body weight single leg RDL. With your knees slightly bent, hinge in your hips with a flat back and reach your arms forward until your trunk is about parallel to the floor. As you lower down, reach your other leg toward the ceiling. Once you meet the given criteria, progress to level two, which is a weighted single leg RDL. Hold a barbell, dumbbells, or another weight in your hands and reach down toward the floor while keeping your back flat. Stand back up and repeat. And level three, weighted RDL. By performing on two legs, your goal with this exercise is to progressively overload the hamstrings in a lengthened position. Perform for three sets of six to eight challenging repetitions. Hip extension strength, option two. Level one, 45 degree hip extension. Using a Roman chair or back extension machine, place your arms across your chest and hinge forward until you create about a 90 degree hip angle. Using your hamstrings, return back to the starting position where your shoulders, hips, and knees are in a straight line. For level two, use the same technique and execution, but now perform on one leg. And for level three, perform the single leg hip extension while holding a weight across your chest. Move through your full hip range of motion for three sets of six to eight reps on each side. If you don't have access to the equipment necessary for option two, here's a third hip extension option. Level one, hamstring bridge. Place both feet on a bench or elevated surface with knees bent about 10 to 20 degrees. Bridge up until your hips are straight and then slowly lower back down. Once you can meet the given criteria, progress to level two, which is an eccentric hamstring bridge. Bridge up on two legs and while keeping hips high, remove one leg and then slowly lower it down. Repeat all reps on one leg before switching sides. Level three, single leg hamstring bridge. Keep one knee towards your chest and bridge up and down through your full range of motion on one leg. And level four, place a weight on the working leg and perform three sets of eight to 10 challenging reps on each side. In addition to hamstring specific exercises, if you have time, optional exercises targeting the glutes, quads, and calves can be helpful since these are also heavily involved in running and sprinting. For the glutes, start with a hip thrust and then progress to a single leg hip thrust. From here, you can progress either to a high velocity single leg hip thrust or a weighted hip thrust. For the quads, here's a split squat progression. Level one, heels elevated squat, Level two, split squat. Level three, front foot elevated split squat. And level four, weighted front foot elevated split squat. And finally, a calf progression. Level one, double leg heel raise. Level two, single leg heel raise. Level three, deficit single leg heel raise. And level four, weighted deficit single leg heel raise. Another consideration is hamstring flexibility. This may not require direct intervention as range of motion deficits will likely recover on their own or with the previous exercises. However, if deficits do persist or you simply find that these feel good, here are two options. Option one, active knee extension. Hold the back of your thigh with your hip flexed to about 90 degrees and then slowly straighten your knee as far as comfortable Perform for three sets of 12 repetitions, two to three times a day, while following the same pain parameters as before. And option two, active straight leg raise. Place a strap or towel around your foot and lift your leg up until you feel a mild to moderate hamstring stretch. While keeping both knees straight, actively lift and lower your other leg for three sets of 12 repetitions. Perform on both legs, two to three times a day. You should perform the hamstring exercises two to three times a week, progressing through the levels based on performance and pain tolerance. 
If time allows, you can consider adding additional exercises, but the hamstring exercises should take priority. You can also perform optional stretches to improve your hamstring range of motion if needed. The second key component of rehab is a progressive running protocol. As stated in a 2022 paper, it is arguably the most important aspect of rehab since it's fundamental to performance in many sports and is a common mechanism of injury. These authors also outlined a three-stage protocol that you can use as a guideline. After you can walk with a pain rating four or less out of 10, you can start stage one. Jog slowly for 20 meters, then increase your speed up to 50% of your maximal velocity for 60 meters, then return back to a slow jog for 20 meters. Once you can complete three repetitions at 50% of your maximal speed with minimal pain, progress to level two. Here, you slowly ramp up to moderate speed for 30 meters, then increase to high speed running up to 80% of your maximal velocity for 50 meters before slowing back down again. Once you can complete three repetitions at 80% without pain, progress to the final stage. For stage three, you will perform shorter sprint distances at a higher intensity. Your goal is to gradually increase your running speed in 5% increments until you're able to safely build up to 100% effort sprints without pain. Ideally, you will perform the running protocol two to three days a week on the days you do not complete the strength exercises. If you have to perform them on the same day, complete the running first so sprinting is not compromised by fatigue or soreness. How do you know when you can return to sport? Well, unfortunately, there's not a simple clear-cut answer. Generally, the research to support return to sport decisions is scarce likely because this process is complex and multifactorial. But there is a consensus on some criteria that must be met prior to returning to play. The main criteria includes the absence of pain on palpation and during strength and flexibility testing, hamstring flexibility within 90% of the other side, psychological readiness, and the ability to perform various tests at 100% effort without pain during or after. Possessing similar eccentric hamstring strength side to side is a potential criterion, but at this moment, not essential for reducing risk of re-injury. However, because it is associated with sprinting acceleration mechanics, maximizing eccentric hamstring strength should still be a desirable rehab outcome for sports performance. Also, you should continue to perform these exercises even after you return to sport in order to avoid regression of the positive changes in hamstring muscle structure. And finally, it's important to understand that even when you do return back to sport, it might not be at 100% of your desired level. This will still take time until you can gradually build up to performing at a pre-injury level or higher. So to put this all together, from the moment you sustain a hamstring strain to the day you return to sport, can take anywhere from one to six weeks or longer, depending on the severity of injury, sport position, goals, etc. There might be a slight advantage to starting rehab exercises early and performing them within a certain pain threshold, since this has been shown to be safe and may allow earlier exposure to and progression of beneficial stimuli. Regardless, rehab should focus on hamstring specific strength and a progressive running protocol, both of which can be performed simultaneously on alternating days, two to three times a week. If you have additional time, you can also implement other strength exercises as well as flexibility drills if needed. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, do us a favor, tap that like button, subscribe, and if you have any questions or suggestions on future content, you can drop those down in the comments below. Until next time.